I've been in production for about 15 years or so and there are a set of mistakes that I've seen on productions over and over again and some of these I'm guilty of myself and I'll share some of that experience with you. My goal with this video is to help you avoid some of these mistakes on your shoots. The first one is mostly for freelance shooters but at some point you may forget your tripod plate. I've seen this so many times I did this couple of times early on when I was first starting out. I was shooting weddings. I showed up to a wedding without my tripod plate and I ended up gaffing with gaff tape my camera to my tripod without a plate. I could barely tilt or pan. It was very, very embarrassing. So hopefully you always remember your tripod plate. What I ended up doing, I actually bought five different tripod plates in two different types of tripods for Manfrotto tripods, for Sockler tripods. They're a little bit of a different shape and I put one in my car, one in my laptop case. I never ever after making that mistake forgot a tripod plate again because lots of times your AC may forget to for example take it off the bottom of the camera, put it on the tripod, pack it up with the tripod. So hopefully you could have a backup tripod plate in case that happens because most likely at some point it will happen to you too. Now this one I've also done myself and I've seen happen multiple times in the last 15 years and that's when people either forget to press record or do this thing called double tap. They basically press record and stop and then you do the take and they realize they were never rolling. This you got to be really careful so I always make sure I have some sort of tally light or some kind of indicator that I'm rolling especially if you're doing run and gun type of shoots, if you're doing events, there's something that you can't replicate again. You have to make sure you're rolling. So I'd rather overshoot or start rolling early on a take than miss the take entirely. Now, when I did it, it was on a commercial shoot, so it wasn't that big of a deal because it was the first take. It was almost like a rehearsal, but it was incredibly embarrassing because you have to speak up at that moment that you weren't recording. You have to say something because if the director is relying on that take, even if it was a rehearsal and you don't have it, you better say something then so they could do another take. But be very, very careful that you don't let this happen. And if you're on a shoot and someone else is shooting and you notice that, speak up, tap them on the shoulder, whisper that they're not rolling so hopefully they could roll. This next one I personally haven't done, but it's happened on my shoots and I've seen it happen to other people's shoots. And it's one of the worst things that could happen on a shoot. And that's if someone, yourself or the AC or the camera operator, somebody formats the card before it has been backed up on an external hard drive. Now, when this happens, it's terrible because there's almost no way of getting it back. Now, I made some other videos where in one case, I was able to get it back using another software. So sometimes you could get lucky. But when this happens, it's the worst feeling in the world. So now I'm so paranoid that I make sure I always have enough cards where I never have to format a card on shoot. But if you're using more expensive cards, if you're shooting bigger productions, you're shooting at Reds or Alexas, there is no way to have enough cards. So you have to make sure you have the best AC or media manager on set to make sure that is what they're taking care of for you. And you could even double check their work if you're paranoid and you haven't worked with them long enough. But Avoiding formatting a card before it's backed up is a huge, huge deal. Now the next one is relevant to everyone on production and that's not showing up on time. In the world of production, being on time is critical. I hate when people are not on time. I used to always be five or 10 minutes late and someone called me out on it super early. Over 15 years ago, someone called me out on it and they kind of explained to me why I can't be late and I've never been late since. Even when there is traffic and I'm going from the suburbs to the city, I make sure I give myself a big, big cushion. So even in an accident shows up on the highway, it still leaves me a little bit of time. Now, once in a great while, once every few years, something's going to happen where you can't avoid it. But for the most part, you cannot let yourself get a bad reputation of the guy or the girl that's always late on shoots. Okay, so make sure you set your alarm 30 minutes earlier than you usually would. And I know sometimes calls are early, they're 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And it's gonna be kind of terrible if you don't go to sleep early enough the, the night before. But please make sure you're not late to shoots. And if you are late, make sure it doesn't happen again. 
Now this tip is mostly related to smaller shoot with one man band type of productions. But if you're shooting and you're responsible for the audio, what I've noticed sometimes, I haven't personally made this mistake, but I've noticed sometimes people just look at the waveform and they don't have a headphone. So they see that there is some kind of a level going on or some kind of waveform on their monitor. So they assume there's good audio being recorded on camera. Well, the problem is, is interference. If you're not monitoring the audio and there's interference, you may miss things. This happens to my YouTube videos sometimes. That's why I record with duplicate kind of systems the audio, just in case this lob goes out, I have another backup, right? Because I don't want to wear a headphone while I record these videos. But make sure you don't go on the audio waveforms and always monitor the audio with a headphone. This could save you a big headache down the road. And this is kind of a bonus tip, but I'll tell you a story because I did this myself. I'm guilty of this one. But when I was first starting out, I was a PA. So one of my jobs basically was in this one production, my job was to go to the airport pick up the director, the cinematographer, and a couple of talents, and then drive them to the shoot. Now, I had to do this multiple times. Well, the first time I did it, when the director, he sat up front with me in the van, it was a 15-passenger van, which I, I really wasn't qualified to drive, but he asked me what, uh, what I did. Now, I was clearly a production assistant, and I was their driver for the day, and my job was to take them on different shoots or different locations for the shoot. And all I could remember saying was, well, I'm a director. I'm just doing this on the side. And to this day, I'm so embarrassed by that because I wasn't a director. Yes, I went to film school to direct. But on that shoot, I was a production assistant. I was an aspiring director and aspiring cinematographer. But I wasn't one at all by any means. I was years away from having my first shot at being a cinematographer on a shoot. Or directing my own project but at the time I was directing a bunch of student films and I had directed a bunch of student films so I was like I'm a director even though I was a PA so my point is just be proud of whatever job title you have at that moment and tell people what your goals are in the future don't pretend like you're something that you're not when you should be completely proud of being whatever you are at that moment so do not brag do not exaggerate and be happy with whatever level of production you're in. And if you're not, work hard to move up. I hope you found this useful. I'm really hoping you avoid some of the embarrassments I had to go through personally in the last 15 years and I've seen other people go through. It's really, really hard when it happens to you. So hopefully you could keep that as a list and avoid those that I mentioned in this video. Thanks so much for watching. I post filmmaking tutorials and editing tutorials every single week on this channel. And I hope to catch you next time.